Cell phones are usually off limits in classrooms, but a Cambridge startup is harnessing the power of smartphones and tablets as learning tools. WGBH News innovation reporter Christina Quinn visited a, a local middle school where teachers are already seeing what a difference a device can make. In this eighth grade English class at Oak Middle School in Shrewsbury, students place their smartphones and tablets next to their copies of A Midsummer Night's Dream. What we are going to do today is you're going to start with a quiz. Teacher Kate Lewis doesn't tell them to put away their gadgets. Instead, they will take the quiz on them. Get out your device. If you need an iPad from the cart, get one. If you have your own, log on. The students take the quiz using a free online program called Socrative. Lewis is also logged on and watches their answers unfold in real time. This live feedback is what Socrative CEO Ben Berté wished he had when he was teaching English abroad a few years ago. When you have one student raising their hand or two students or, or you're spending all the time having every student write a sentence on the board, you've used half of class in order to maybe see what the whole class is thinking. But when you're actually getting it all in real time, it allows you to take the ideas a step further. 750,000 teachers worldwide use Socrative, whether it's for taking polls, taking quizzes, or conducting brainstorm sessions. The concept has caught on fast, and more companies are developing similar programs as more students BYOD, or bring your own device. Technology becomes this, this platform where you can leverage aggregation and the ability to see more, and it's engaging. At Oak Middle, students quietly type out their final answers on touchscreens. Kate Lewis can tell immediately if her students understand the material. In this case, a lot of them haven't quite figured out the difference between personification and metaphor. A lot of people said personification. Does anyone want to explain why that's a metaphor and not personification? She says using Socrative and other digital platforms does more than save time from grading quizzes at home. I could deal with the problem a lot faster than before, and it also allows me to change my instruction based on the student's needs. And with with students, momentum is really important. And for a generation that has grown up in the age of Google, this kind of instant feedback is a no-brainer. We always have these questions that we want to ask them about how do we do on the test, uh, questions that we had that we couldn't answer on the test, but with Socrative we get it instantly. Also, there's a better way of keeping track of everything because if you write all your notes down on a paper but you leave it at school, you don't have the notes, but if it's on your own personal device, then you don't forget it. Because you always have your phone. Yeah, because you always have your phone on you, so. Now that's a line you won't find in A Midsummer Night's Dream, but one that's a reflection of our times. Christina Quinn, WGBH News. So what other ways is technology transforming the classroom, and are there any drawbacks? Sue Kusak teaches courses online learning at Lesley University. Welcome to Greater Boston. Thank you so much. So this is fascinating. I've never seen it integrated this way. Are you a, are you a proponent of this? I'm a big fan of technology, but it, you have to always qualify whether it's being used appropriately. And in this instance, uh, it looks like the teacher is asking questions that are thought-provoking for yeah. the students, but it is possible to ask questions that what is the date that something happened or that level of thinking isn't really deep thinking. It, you could find out whether your students know that kind of answer, but um, I think even the owners of this application would prefer that it be used to promote critical thinking and deeper thinking. Which that was. I'm getting a personification metaphor. So do does the teacher put the lesson plan into Socrative, or does does it come already programmed? I mean, how, how do it's they know? It's an authoring environment, so they give you several choices on the type of quiz that you want to ask your students. Some of them would be multiple choice. They give you an opportunity to do short answer. So there are a variety of ways that you can stage, but you have to build it yourself. But the building of it is actually very simple. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the beauties of it is, is it's free, which is good during times when school budgets are very tight. And it doesn't require that school students have um, uh, an account. So that all students have to do is go to a specific website, log into the hmm. classroom of the teacher, and then the teacher launches the quiz. Well, how, how does the company make anything if it's free? Well, I actually don't know the answer to that, <laughs> but, I suspect, that but, I, but I suspect like, that there's some level of advertising that's yeah, happening. Yeah, probably. On, right there on the iPad. Um, well, while while have, they're taking the quiz about a Midsummer Night Screen, is a thing for Kool-Aid coming up? Or? I haven't noticed that that is the no. case. But 
for, in talking to the owners in the past, I've seen them at conferences, mm. uh, they seem committed to keeping it free. So um, discussing with them their economic model might be a, a good idea. But that type of program where you um, have the flexibility to design mm. on the fly and collecting data real time is, is quite useful. You can actually share it out so that the students can see the answers coming in real time if you project it on the board or uh, once the quiz is closed the teacher will get a spreadsheet giving um, them the information right away and okay. you can respond to it. That was a question I had so when they're taking the quiz once they've given the answer they can't take it back I take it and does the uh, does the teacher then does it something pop up and say right or wrong or? this. The, um, you can set things up so that the, it depends upon how you've organized your quiz mm -hmm. so the students can find out whether they're right or wrong. But the teacher will also get um, a, a spreadsheet right away. Sure. So you'll see how your students are doing. And so if they tripped up on question three and question seven, you can then throw it out yeah, to the class nice. to have a group discussion on what might be the answer for that. Who knows the answer? How could we have thought about that differently? Is it better for certain courses? I mean, that was sort of like the perfect example. Um, does it work in math as well or history? Or I think it can work in any content area. Um, we've used it. I have a project at the Kennedy Longfellow School, uh, which is an elementary school in Cambridge. We've used it to launch uh, scratch activities with kids in the afternoon. And we've also, in our after school uh, classes, and we've, I've also used it with adults. So you can use it for a variety of reasons. They give you the flexibility. They have a few different types of assessments that you can offer, which gives you that level of flexibility. I mean, is, is there a socioeconomic component of this? I mean, is this, is this going to end up in all public schools, or is it just not feasible? It's an online free resource. Yeah, but the pad itself is not. So this gets at some of the issues related to how technology is deployed in schools. Yeah. Um, in the school that you highlighted, it looks like they've got a BYOD, a bring yeah. your own device, yeah. act, um, happening there. So they have they had a lot of extras, though. They had extras for students that can't mm. participate in that model, and this, they are allowing students to bring in their own technology. Mm. Where Socrative kicks in that's kind of useful is that it is platform neutral. It can work on um, an iPad, it can work on an Android tablet, it wow. can work on a computer, um, it can work on your cell phone. So in that way, it gives you the flexibility yeah. to apply it to whatever technology you have. Kind of makes me want to go back to school. All right. <laughs> Sue Gusak, thanks for joining us. Appreciate Thank you. That.